pubs reopened the pubs reopened what a gallivanting good time so super saturday happened right i mentioned at the start of the show super saturday was when the uk government allowed pubs across the uk to open their doors from i'm gonna say it was like 6 a.m in the morning right because when that news first broke everyone was like, oh my god what are they doing then we sort of understood that they didn't want the pubs to open on a friday at like you know 30 minutes past 12 or one minute past 12 they wanted everyone to open sort of like at a reasonable time so they kind of gave them the 6 a.m um opening time so that you know most of the pubs wouldn't open at that time they're gonna open at eight probably the earliest and then um there was a lot of hesitation around it i think a lot of people were rightfully worried about the situation because i think a lot of people are still um under i still probably correctly thinking we don't really deserve pubs and bars to be open we haven't necessarily got the virus that much under control but considering the level of effort that's gone in considering how uncooperative we are as a country and considering the good work that we've done so far it probably made some sense that we were able the government was like you know what let me give you a little bit of an olive branch right and i think it probably came the right amount of time people are already going nuts there's already way too many illegal parties going on around the country forest raves and warehouse parties were getting disrupted and people's and people just you know were trying to essentially freak out and get a bit crazy so i think offering us a bit of an olive branch by opening up the salons and the bars was a great way to sort of appease everybody for the long stretch that's going to um go on with this virus i think anyone that thinks we're going to return to normal before august is probably smoking mad amount of kush we're definitely going to be under lockdown for or under you know this sort of like restricted movement for a while probably until september um so i think this was probably the way to sort of appease everybody and get people to sort of like settle down right if you can go out to, to a bar and have a pint if you can go out and have a steak if you can go out and have a haircut you essentially have some you know you have some freedom of movement um, you get given some sort of leeway it does go a long way especially if it's going to last until september um so yeah everything went over pretty well really and here's a little roundup video on youtube that sort of um, expounds on what essentially happened during the whole time I'll quickly pay for you here in the background pub life is back but different the old familiar is unfamiliar stickers leading to the bar hand sanitizer on the wall and you need to give your details for track and trace on entry I'm just glad to get back and have a few pints. <laughs> and then that's the bottom line. <laughs> At the same time, it's a risk opening the pubs, but we've got to think of pe people's mental health as well. I thought it would be a lot busier than it is, but it's nice to kind of get back to normal. There is a thrill to the near normality. Theme parks are open if you book in advance. Thorpe Park in Surrey took 2,000 visitors today, a fifth of its capacity. The Swarm roller coaster soars through a post apocalyptic world, and post lockdown adds to the strangeness. Seats are sanitised between the rides of masked thrill seekers. How does it feel? Uh, different. Yeah. It's not as quite a good buzz as it usually yeah, the is. The atmosphere is not as good because um, there's seemed... not many people here, but that's nice because the queues are lower. I literally just went on bumper cars loads. All you need to do is have a mask to go on a ride now. It just feels normal again. It's nice to have that normalisation. Just yeah. feel, it feels good. Yeah. It's a bit yeah. disappointing they're not all open, but obviously government guidelines. It has to be a certain degree of safety. And that's the interesting part about things reopening. I think I, I read a few stories about this in the States. It seems like businesses are willing to open, right, under COVID-19 safety regulations, right? They don't have any real problem with it. You can train up your staff. You can probably put the right protocols together to make sure everything's safe and sanitized and all that malarkey. But it's going to take a real, real long time to... Um, to get the public back on board to for them to feel like it's safe enough to go back out um especially if you add to the fact that i think people's habits have just changed i think um what brian chesky from airbnb said recently which i mentioned on the podcast from airbnb where he mentioned that um international travel is going to change forever i think it's really true i think people are going to be a lot more local they're probably going to travel less to far-flung places in order to have some sort of fun with their friends so it's only natural that those same decisions to travel will also change how people interact with their you know entertainments and cultural events in their city or in their town that they live in it's only going to be it's only going to change for the best i think going forward but unfortunately these small businesses are going to suffer you know bars restaurants theater places zoos and stuff they're going to suffer somewhat because people have essentially had 
three months plus to essentially look reanalyze how they interact with their city and town how they communicate with their friends and at the heart of it as long as you've got friends around in regards if it's sitting in a huddle in a park somewhere regardless if it's on a bench somewhere regardless if you're in some shoddy pub that's all you really need you don't really need the ad extra added bells and whistles so their businesses are going to have to either <coughs> evolve and adapt or they're gonna have to ch change they have just got to offer more to the customers that's what they have to kind of entice them with a lot more than just being open and i've been prior a lot of these restaurants or these bars were just content enough just to be open and that'll be enough but i think now in the post covid world you're going to need to offer the customers a lot more than that let the video continue ultimately this is an experiment nobody knows what this easing back to normality will bring and a lot will depend on how we behave and whilst it is essential for the economy it is also a potential opportunity for the virus. Now, the government t tells us that the R factor is between 0.7 and 0.9 still. That R factor is already too high if we're trying to get rid of the virus in Britain as quickly as possible. With pubs, bars, restaurants, hairdressers uh, and cinemas uh, opening today, I can only advise people be utterly cautious. For many, the real excitement worth queuing for today was a simple haircut. It's my first time back in the salon since before lockdown, and um, I'm finally being pampered, and it feels great. Um, hopefully get my colour sorted, have my hair cut. Thank goodness. <laughs> what makes this Saturday super depends on what you've been missing. For some, it's bingo. Others might have to wait till Wednesday when the National Gallery becomes the first major art museum to reopen. The message is be careful. Having climbed out of lockdown, we are dipping into the unknown. Jason Fa and it's very true. And I guess the, one of the best things, again, I keep mentioning it as a little silver lining, but we've probably been able to appreciate the things, you know, it probably gave us a, a different sort of understanding about what we appreciate in life you know what matters the most and again you know probably prior to covid you were you know looking for these external factors to make your life more wholesome but now you've sort of whittled them down to some really basic amenities right like being able to go to the gym we we'll be able to do that you'll see it being able to order a steak and a glass of wine right you can do that in the moment being able to order a pint being able to order some food in the restaurant not having to clean up yourself those things are you know probably a lot more important now to you than they were prior and i guess that um rejigging of priorities is a good thing isn't it going forward and i think again just considering how crap has been here in the uk in most of the country and most of europe and most of the world i think people are a bit more appreciative apart from north america of course if you live in america you're you're you know you're screwed you have to first convince people there's a real virus in the first place but i think in places where we accept it's true it's just a it's a way of i don't know i guess if you look at what's happening in new zealand you'd say they've probably got a lot more cooperation there amongst their citizens and this in terms of how they go about combating it but in places where people are skeptical you have to just try and work with what you've got and for the most part we've done okay we've done pretty okay i think for the most part it hasn't been as bad as i thought it would be but that isn't to say that it could get you know it could get essentially worse what it's like a two-week period by the time to find out what's happened this weekend but so far it's been pretty cool and i think one other interesting part that i love about it is how it looks like in central london right we've got all these chairs and tables out in soho where people are able to have a bit more of a continent of feel in terms of how they go out. and i think that's been a really good part of lockdown it's allowed us to really maybe reimagine how we use our spaces in london which is you know we don't have much space anyway right it's a bit of a um clusterfuck but i think overall it's been pretty cool. this is a video on youtube someone oh, something for the sun actually of people around right you've got basically crowds all gathering around soho where the streets are basically closed up and the streets it's not too bad to look at actually it's looks quite fun i'd say may have been the minority here but because there is a feeling among some people that you know most of the roads in soho should be closed on the weekends anyway right especially um in the evening when people are going out having a bit of a booze up having a bit of a dance with their friends you don't really need to have cars you know zooming around the place um obviously you know black cab drivers are going to be annoyed you know delivery workers are going to be annoyed but i think it's a good thing going forward in general and for the most part you know 
we are, we've known now that the virus can't really spread that well outside in the outside environments and you know if you keep your distance you'll be able to do it well but looking at this crowd is pretty difficult to keep your distance when you're outside <laughs> Moving around, but I, I, quite, I quite like the look of it. I think the look of it is pretty cool. People have loads of disposable income because they've probably been sitting at home not doing anything, right? There's only so many Uber Eats you can order and indulge yourself in, but all the money you're saving on travel and stuff has probably been helped as well. You'll be able to add that to your kitty of when you go dr drinking with your friends. <laughs> Yeah, just just a good it's, thing. I think very, very autistic. Stay apart. There's tables of, you know, markings all over the places. I think tables of like six and seven, you know, spaced out one meter apart to make sure people don't get too close. Staff and waiters wearing masks and gloves and stuff. No, not too bad. I think it's actually a good thing to see a more metropolitan side of London. You know, utilizing the sidewalks like they do in Paris and stuff. So yeah, I think that's been a good thing really to see overall. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens the following weekends going forward. But I think people have dealt with it pretty well. I think there's been a bit of a mature response when it comes to our interaction with the city when things got opened up.